Hey this is Sky Photography Bonsai. In this video we're going to talk about this Minolta MN35Z camera. Thanks to CameraCraft in Rockford, Illinois for letting me try this out at their shop. Minolta, the brand name, is no longer the original Minolta camera company. It's now owned by the Elite Brands Company. Another camera related company that this brand owns is Rokinon. They make different lenses. They import that from the Samyang company which is based in Korea. Anyways, this Elite Brands owns Minolta and they have a few cameras now, so it's pretty interesting to see that brand still existing in some fashion. I wanted to check it out just to see how it all works. This camera is very similar to Nikon's B500. It does not have the viewfinder. It does have that long telephoto zoom. Specification wise, 20 megapixels, 1 over 2.3 inch sensor. Very standard for this type of camera. ISO range from 125 to 6400. However, the auto ISO only goes up to 1600. The lens is rated 35x zoom, and the equivalent focal length in full frame terms is 25mm to 873mm f3 to 5.9. That's very standard in this type of camera. Basically, you get a decently wide focal length plus a very long telephoto. Video wise, you have up to 1080p at 60 frames a second, which is a little better than some cameras of this type. It does have Wi-Fi and Bluetooth capability, also a USB 2 connection which works for power. It actually does not come with any type of separate power charger for the battery, so you have to use the USB connection to get power. But you can buy a separate charger if you do want that capability. I would suggest, of course, always with these type of cameras, buying a second battery is a good thing. The actual battery is an MP120 rated at 1700 milliamp hours, which is actually a pretty solid amount of power for this battery. My favorite thing about this camera is actually the grip. It's very large, it's substantial, great in my hand. Really depends on you, of course, but I really like the grip on this camera. The case itself feels solid, nice thick plastic on it. However, the buttons are a little spongy, I guess you could say. And when you press one of the buttons on the back, another one up above it moves a little bit so it probably has some type of gasket connected all between those. It just kind of signifies it's a little lower end quality wise inside there. The tripod socket is not in line with the lens. This camera takes SD cards. The slot is where the battery compartment is. In the manual it says up to 64 gigabytes. Now, I would assume you could get larger cards but they only guarantee up to 64. There is a little bit of internal memory in this camera. If you do forget your card, you could potentially take a few photos at lower quality settings. With cameras like this that have the contrast detect autofocus, it's always a mixed bag. With focusing, you will potentially have some issues, of course, with that, especially when you go to the longer focal lengths. I did notice a little bit of stuttering, a weird motor sound when I was all the way extended with the telephoto lens and also trying to focus indoors. One of the biggest negatives of this camera is that you cannot select the focus area. You can't move the focus point around manually. That really limits your creative options because you're basically letting the camera decide for the most part. Now you can use the center area, which I guess you could use that and then recompose your photos, which is the main way you can get that artistic control. You can also use face tracking, wide area focus, and also tracking autofocus. There are a few special modes with this camera. I think they're the most interesting features. You do have the panorama mode. I did try that out. You have to move pretty slow with this camera to get a full panorama. The most interesting feature I think of this camera is actually the GIF capture mode. You can take those GIFs or GIFs, whatever you want to call them, but it is pretty limited. You only get one second or three second intervals, and then it takes all those frames and puts them into a GIF file. I did try it out two times. I actually went back to the camera shop after I saw it in the manual. I was like, what is this? It has GIF capture. I'm gonna go back there, try it out. And I did. It works pretty well, actually. But like I said, it is pretty limited as well. It also has HDR mode, so you get somewhat better dynamic range because it takes multiple photos and puts them together. It has time lapse. I really didn't try it out too much, but it is in there. That's nice to have. Overall, I'm relatively impressed with this camera given the price, and it's pretty similar to that B500, as I mentioned, from Nikon. I think in this case, we really don't know how reliable this camera will be. If you can find it at a low price, I'm sure as time goes on, it will definitely drop in price quite a bit. It might be a decent option to consider over the B500, depending on price. If you want a dedicated camera with a large optical zoom lens, it does have the image stabilization in there. 
I think you will potentially get better images from some phones, but you won't get that optical zoom. So that's the largest selling point of cameras like this, especially ones without the viewfinder. You want a low price as possible, and you want that optical zoom lens. Now this one does have a few of those interesting features, like I mentioned, but it is a very basic camera. Just like the B500 is a very basic camera, I have a hard time recommending these cameras. If you can get them at a low price, it would be something fun to mess around with, especially in good lighting, you'll get decent results. Just don't have your expectations very high when you buy a camera like this, but it does give you some versatility over a phone. That was a look at the Minolta MN35Z. Again, thanks to CameraCraft for letting me try this out at their shop. I'm Scott from Photography Bonsai. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please consider subscribing. Helps me out a lot. Likes and shares help out a lot as well. Thanks again.